This is Titus Frost, spitting truth, causing glitches in the matrix. Welcome to the Hillary and Bill Clinton body count documentary. In this video we're going to discuss the 114 people the Clintons have killed to keep quiet. And here we have Bill and Hillary Clinton making the Masonic sign of silence. And that's a term you can look up on the internet and you'll see lots of other people making this hand gesture telling anyone that might oppose them or might leak information to be silent or they will get killed. And these two aren't kidding because they are going to kill a lot of people. <laughs> I just had to kill a lot of people! And, um... and one of the most prominent people they killed is Gary Webb and there's a movie out about him and there's a book, Dark Alliance, which I've read and it's a must read for anyone watching this video and Gary Webb exposed the MENA drug operation being run by the CIA at a Little Rock, Arkansas where Hill and Bill got their start so there's going to be a lot of deaths and things surrounding Hillary and Bill and the CIA and covering up what Gary Webb exposed on the MENA drug operation including Gary Webb himself and he supposedly committed suicide, and we'll get to that later in the video. But this is another person that we will be adding to the Hillary and Bill body count list. And you'll see a familiar pattern around Hillary Clinton and Bill. That your plane might crash, your car might crash, you might commit suicide by shooting yourself in the head multiple times, you might get killed in a robbery where no one actually takes anything, if you oppose these people. It's just a very, very strange pattern that involves 114 people that I have put together in this one documentary. So the list I am using comes from whatreallyhappened.com and I went and verified all the names on that list and found other articles and things on every one of these people but I have to give this guy a shout out because since Victor Thorne's death he has the best list of the Clinton body count and all 114 that I came up with were also on this guy's list. And I've also heard, I can't remember his name, but I've definitely heard the guy who runs this website on Coast to Coast AM on a bunch of other issues. And that's how I first came across his website to begin with. And he sounds pretty legit in interviews to me. So we're going to start things off with Victor Thorne, who on his 54th birthday, August 1st, 2016, the man who wrote the book on Hillary and Bill, the murder volume, documenting all the people that they've killed over the years, stemming out of Little Rock, Arkansas, covering up the MENA drug operation. This individual, right before she was about to run for office, and he would have definitely had a bunch of more books, in the middle of his writing career, committed suicide by shooting himself. Yeah, right. So that's... Hillary body count victim number one. So before the Whitewater scandal, Hillary and Bill were involved in another scandal in Branson that was very similar and had the same circle of friends getting rich from it. And the lawyer that represented the opposing side, lawyer Donald Joe Adams, up and committed suicide, wouldn't you know it, and right in the middle of all this. So Clinton body count two. The next individual, John Ashey, was revealing the Clintons were taking bribes from a Chinese citizen, N.G. Lap Seng. And John Ashey, at the time, was General Assembly President of the United Nations, and he died when his bench press bar fell on his throat and crushed his larynx, despite the fact that he worked out regularly and never had any sort of such issues before. So, John Ashey, your Clinton body count number three, and as they always say, serial killers kill those who are near to them. And you can see Hillary shaking his hand right there. Shaking hands with death. Number four of people murdered by the Clintons is Robert Bates, the pilot Barry Seal's aircraft mechanic. And we'll get to Barry Seal later in the video. But Robert Bates died from an overdose of mouthwash. And even though the local authorities called it a homicide, there was no investigation Hillary got off completely scot-free, and I picked this picture because this is what is called duping delight. 
Gandy L. Baugh is the next victim of the cleanse. And this was an attorney who was representing a Mr. Lassiter in a case involving financial misconduct. And Mr. Lassiter would later be arrested for drug charges. And he was a close friend and advocate of Bill and Hillary Clinton while they were governors in Arkansas. And Gandy Baugh's partner in the law firm also committed suicide a month later. In 1996, Admiral Jeremy Borda, instead of going on Newsweek and testifying against the Clintons' plan to downsize the Navy, decided to go home and shoot himself twice in the chest with two different guns, therefore committing suicide according to all the official reports, and it was over not being allowed to wear a V-pin for serving in Vietnam or Valor or something of that nature, which is total nonsense. He was killed by the Clintons to keep him quiet. Once again, body count number six. This individual, Ron Brown, the former DNC chairman, was killed in 1996 on a plane on his way to Bosnia. And later, his lawyer was killed by gunshot a week later. And the aircraft controller who was in charge for his flight was suicided. And you can see here... Bill Clinton at the funeral for Ron Brown, and he's laughing and joking until he's seen by the camera right there. He's like, oh, uh-oh, put on the sad face. I just killed this guy. I can't be seen laughing about it. Of course, the guy to the right didn't get the message because he's still laughing and joking things up while Bill's now faking tears. And this just goes to show you that these people can't keep their stories straight, and they're just completely obvious. Bill and Hillary could probably kill someone right out in the middle of the public and no one would do anything because they're members of the establishment, they're CIA puppets, and they're totally subservient to the Council on Foreign Relations. It's a total sham. This is a three-for-one deal with all three people involved being killed, therefore body counts up to nine. The next name on the list is James Bunch, who had a black book of VIP Johns in Arkansas when Bill Clinton would have been there. And James shot himself, and the list and all the documents in his place vanished. So you can add this to the Clinton body count as number 10, as this is another mysterious death surrounding them. In a pattern of the Clintons killing people who have information about other people they've killed, Eric Butera had info on Mary Mahoney's death, another individual who we'll get to later that the Clintons likely had killed. And Eric Butera was sent into a crack house to buy m drugs for the police, and the crackheads beat him to death. And his mother was awarded originally $100 million for this, but a judge later cut that down to a million. Another individual, Caetano Carani, died in 1994, right after he had filmed a shooting at the White House. And he died, conveniently for the Clintons, just before testifying, and all of his film disappeared afterwards from food poisoning. And you can definitely add this to the Clinton body count as number 12. Danny Casolero was working on a project called The Octopus, which was involved with a software called Promise that the U.S. government had stolen from a private company, put backdoor software in to spy on everyone with to look through financial transactions, and then given it out to other people for free, other governments and companies, so they could spy on everyone with their backdoor access. Danny Casolero stumbled upon a network of people that made a whole bunch of money from the Iran-Contra affairs, and he was writing a book with all the documents that was going to expose all these people for their financial connections to the Iran-Contra affair, and he was found dead in a bathtub with his tendons sliced, and he... Cut, he killed himself by cutting both wrists, but the first wrist he cut, he severed the tendons on, therefore making cutting the other wrist impossible. So he couldn't have killed himself, but that's what it was ruled anyways. And this lady was just killed on 3-3-16 in her sleep, and she was claiming that Hillary was responsible for the Honduras coup that has turned Honduras into one of the most dangerous places on the planet right now. And Berta Cacheres just happened to mysteriously die in the middle of the night, despite being somewhat reasonably healthy. 
So you can add her to the list as Hillary and Bill body count victim number 14. Next on the list is William Colby. And you could probably add this guy to the CIA and the Clinton body count list because this guy had a lot of enemies. I mean, you want to talk about having a lot of enemies, this guy had a lot of enemies. And he was found dead in his canoe from drowning or near his canoe without a life jacket on after he decided to go canoeing right in the middle of his dinner because all his food was left on the table as if he just got up in the middle of a meal and decided to go canoeing in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, right. This guy definitely got killed. There was plenty of motives why he should have been killed by all, not should have, why they would have wanted him to be killed, I should correct. And, you know, he also did a lot of bad things as well in Vietnam. So this guy probably had it coming and he definitely was murdered. So you can add him to the Clinton CIA body count as number 15. Supposedly, when Bill was attorney general in Arkansas, he had an affair with the 26-year-old Suzanne Coleman. And when she was seven months pregnant, she supposedly committed suicide by shooting herself through the back of her head. Uh, yeah. And supposedly, the kid was Bill's kid. So Bill not only killed a 26-year-old woman, he also killed his own child that was seven months old in the womb. The next two individuals I put on the same slide because they both were trained death witnesses. And there's a whole bunch of trained death witnesses that get killed. One of them was Gregory Collins, who died from a gunshot blast to the face that they called a suicide. And Keith Coney was chased down on his motorcycle and killed in what was ruled a traffic accident. And both of those guys were about to testify on the trained death wit that took place. So you can add those to the Clinton body count. So that's plus two, giving us 19 so far. Three more of the Clinton body count victims include L.J. Davis, who is a reporter investigating the Clinton scandals. His notes were stolen and he was attacked in his Little Rock, uh, Arkansas hotel room. David Dry was killed in 99. Uh, while he was producing the Clinton Chronicles, who a bunch of other people have been attacked over or killed. We'll get to some of them later. Daniel A. Duco, C. Chairman of Leadership 2000, and a Democrat National Committee main fundraising effort. He was in charge of the inflow of money from China, and he accidentally died when his bicycle crashed and he struck his head on concrete, not once, but twice. And five Navy operators died in a Hawkeye crash off of Italy after their plane was waved off from landing on an aircraft carrier. And all of them had been Clinton's bodyguards on his trip to the Roosevelt car aircraft carrier like a week before. And interestingly, another aircraft crashed with the other three people that had been escorting Clinton on that trip. So all eight people that were Clinton bodyguards died in two separate crashes. The names of these five naval operators is not yet known, but you can add another plus five to the Clinton body count for these five guys. The next victim, number 28 on the Clinton body count, Herschel Friday, a Clinton fundraiser and attorney from Arkansas who died in a mysterious plane explosion that has never been explained in 1994 during the Clinton presidency. Vincent Foster, one of the most known Clinton body count victims, grew up with Hillary in the same town, and he was a partner with her, as you can see here, in her law firm back in Arkansas. And Vincent Foster was investigating and about to testify before Congress regarding the Clintons' finances, of which he had intimate knowledge, when he shot himself in a park, and his dead body was found with no gun, a faked suicide note. Clinton body count number 29. All right, now we're about to add nine to the list. Starting with Aldo Francoia, Secret Service agent, Captain Kevin N. Ernest, Captain Kimberly Joe Weilhauer, Second Lieutenant Benjamin T. Hall, Staff Sergeant Michael J. Smith Jr., Senior Airman Rick L. Merritt, Staff Sergeant Michael R. York, Senior Airman Billy R. Ogston, Airman Thomas A. Stevens all died on a C-130 carrying the presidential limos when it crashed mysteriously and there's still no explanation for the crash and I'm not sure if this is a 
direct thing, but I'm pretty sure that the Secret Service agent probably had something on Bill, which is why the plane went down. In another convenient crash for the Clintons, four Marine One helicopter pilots, the guys that fly the Air Force One version of the helicopter, the Marine One it's called, and 15 other people, I'm not even adding to the count list, died. So we're only going to count the four pilots in a V-22 crash that supposedly happened when the V-22 caught fire in mid-air and then crashed. And these guys flew around with Bill all the time and probably had dirt on him, which is why this happened. Kathy Ferguson was a witness in the Paula Jones case who had packed her bags to go on a trip and then all of a sudden mysteriously shot herself. And she was also married to the Arkansas State Trooper, Danny Ferguson, that used to bring supposedly women to Bill Clinton for him to have sex with. And the officer would stand watch while Clinton had sex with those women. And Kathy Ferguson, the wife who was going to testify against Bill, packed her bags and then shot herself in the head. Dwayne Garrett, a talk show radio host and big time Democratic fundraiser who defrauded people and told a bunch of people he was going to meet some friends at an airport and then was found floating under the Golden Gate Bridge a few hours later. And there was a lot of rumors that he had information on fraudulent fundraising by the Clintons. So you can add him to the Clinton body count list as number 44. Remember all that controversy about Obama not saluting properly as he got off the stupid Marine One? Well, Bill Clinton at least salutes properly, then he has those pilots that he salutes killed. So I don't know what's worse to you, but that's actually worse to me. Killing people instead of saluting them properly, it's probably actually worse. And Corporal Eric X. Fox was shot in the head, therefore all of the Marine One pilots who flew with Clinton were killed off. On April 28th, 2000, while Clinton was in the White House, Carlos Gigliotti, an infrared technologies expert who had studied Waco and said that the FBI had actually fired shots on infrared and the FBI came out and said that those shots were something else that doesn't make sense. And this is another person who died from a self-inflicted gunshot, adding him to the Clinton body count, which now stands at 46. A lot of porn stars end up going into the call girl profession or prostitution. And this one, Judy Gibbs, was a Bill Clinton call girl. And Bill used to brag about her when he flew over her house. And to keep her quiet, she was knocked unconscious in her house and her house was burnt to the ground. Therefore, add them to the Bill Clinton body list at number 47, Judy Gibbs. And another four Clinton bodyguards died mysteriously. We don't know what they had on the Clintons, but the crash site was covered up and any documentary evidence was destroyed or taken somewhere. No one knows what happened to it. The military intervened. And all four of these people, Staff Sergeant Haney, Marine Sergeant Sable, Major Barkley, Captain Reynolds, can be added to the Clinton body count, which is now at 48 thus far. Next on the list is journalist Michael Hastings, who was investigating Benghazi and Clinton's role. And his car looks like it was hacked, and the accelerator accelerated him into a tree at high speed. And lots of people have heard about this guy and this mysterious death. And this is definitely one you can add to the Clinton body count at number 49, Michael Hastings. No one's caused more plane crashes than the Clintons. I'm surprised she didn't cause this one as well. But if you get too close to her, your plane may just crash as well. So we're talking about Stanley Hurd and his attorney, Steve Dixon, who got into one plane. It took off. It had issues, landed. So they got into a new plane, which then took off and crashed. So two planes had issues. The second one crashed, killing the guy who served under the Clintons for their health care advisory committee and also treated all of the Clinton's family members for health reasons. So he would have had a lot of interesting things on them. And now you can add him to their body count at number 51. John Hillier, an NBC cameraman, was killed by his dentist when he had a heart attack, even though he was perfectly healthy. 
and Hillier had worked on the Clinton Chronicles and some other videos that were highly critical of the Clinton crime family. Stanley Huggins had been a partner with Hillary Clinton when she was a lawyer, and he was investigating the Madison Guarantee and had a 300-page report ready to go when he flew up to the Northeast to a university and checked into his dorm room only to die of viral pneumonia shortly thereafter. And the Clintons ordered Janet Reno to seal the hospital records from the widow of Stanley Huggins. So you can add Stanley Huggins to the Clinton body count at 53. Next up is journalist Sandy Hume, son of Britt Hume, who was investigating how the Clinton White House used journalists to dig up information on their critics and was a investigative journalist highly critical of the Clinton White House. And this individual was killed, supposedly committed suicide, and they brought the same doctor that ruled Vince Foster's death was a suicide, Dr. Alan Berman, to rule that Sandy Hume's death was a apparent suicide, and all of the records have been sealed. And what's known as the train deaths, this first individual, Kevin Ives, had his skull crushed and then his body run over by a train, and all for likely uncovering what was a drop site that was part of the MENA drug operation that was a part of the Iran-Contra affairs. And this individual was killed, and a whole bunch of other people are killed to keep the murder of this individual quiet. Killed with Kevin Ives was Don Henry, who was stabbed in the back and then run over by a train. And he also had probably uncovered what was a drop site as part of the Mina Dog operation. And his death and Kevin's death, it's called the train death, and a lot of witnesses to that end up getting killed as well. John Jones, in April of 2016, the lawyer for Julian Assange, and was helping with Julian Assange, who runs WikiLeaks, to not get extradited to the United States, mysteriously jumped in front of a commuter train in the United Kingdom, a country with more surveillance cameras than any other country on the planet, and somehow there's no video of this. So I'm adding this guy to the Clinton body count at number 57 because WikiLeaks has released some of the most damning information on the Clintons that has come out in the past few years, and this guy just got killed in April of this year. The next individual on our list is John F. Kennedy Jr., and the Kennedy family seems to have a lot of bad luck surrounding them. This individual's plane crashed just off Martha's Vineyard, and all the media reports that were put about about it were faked. And it was a very suspicious plane crash, and I've talked to a lot of people that actually did some of the work getting the material out of the water because they live on Cape Cod. And he was about to announce his run for senator of New York, and just before that, his plane crashed. And... Then Hillary Clinton became senator of New York. Two more people Hillary Clinton likely had killed by calling it in on that cell phone of hers is Jordan Kettleson, who is a witness to the train deaths, who was found shot to death in the front seat of his pickup truck, and Johnny Franklin Lawhorn Jr., who is the son of Franklin Lawhorn Sr., who had found a box of documents proving the Clintons were connected to the Whitewater scandal and the Madison guarantee and $27,000 cashier's check made out to Bill Clinton and they died or Johnny Franklin Lawhorn Jr. the son died and his friend when they hit a telephone pole at a high rate of speed much like the Michael Hastings death. In this video you can see Sean Lucas right there and Sean Lucas went to the DNC to serve them papers on behalf of the Bernie Sanders supporters for their corruption against Bernie Sanders and basically forcing Hillary to be the DNC candidate. And they went there to serve Debbie Weissman Solch, who ended up having to resign because of this. And this was before the WikiLeaks leaks. And then this individual was found dead in his apartment despite being in perfectly good health by his girlfriend. So he just died randomly, and then because he died, he wasn't able to testify when they said that they did not serve them papers properly. So later, when he could have testified to back up what he did here, he was already dead conveniently for the Clintons. And you can add him to their count at number 61. Next is the case of Mary Katie Mahoney, a White House intern who was 25 years old 
and was killed by being shot five times execution style by likely a silenced pistol. And killed with her was her Starbucks co-staff, because she wasn't at the White House when she was killed. She was just working at a Starbucks nearby. It was Aaron Goodrich, 18 years old, and Emery Evans, 25. All shot execution style. Just before it was released that it was Monica Lewinsky, Paula Jones had made hints that a M-named intern was going to come out with information and then Mary Katie Mahoney gets killed and of course they say the Starbucks was hit as part of a robbery yet four grand was still remaining in the store and none of the victims had anything removed and no one nearby said they heard anything and this is in Georgetown and oddly enough this very Starbucks is also visited often by George Stephanopoulos Hillary Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. So that's three more bodies you can add to the Clinton body count, making it a total of 64. Next on the list is Lieutenant General David J. McLeod, who was assembling evidence against Bill Clinton when his plane was sabotaged and crashed. And this would be Clinton body count number 65. And now we're about to add three more to this list to get to 68. Christine M. Merzian was a Clinton staffer and another intern with the name M, who was killed just after Paula Jones made that hint, and this lady was beaten to death near Georgetown University. And then you have Gordon Maddinson, who was a Clinton associate and was shot in the head, yet that was declared a suicide, and that was in 1997. And the last one is Keith McCaskill, another witness to the train deaths who died November 10th, 88. And supposedly Keith had information on the MENA drug running and the Henry and Ives murder. And he was stabbed 113 times. And before that, he had told his family that someone was out to get him. Next up is Florence Martin, CIA subcontractor accountant. And she's connected to the Barry Seal case. Supposedly, she held an account in the PIN number for a Barry Seal account in the Cayman Islands that had $1.4 million, which, after she was shot in the head three times, was moved somewhere else and never seen again. And Barry Seal is connected to the Clintons, and that's who killed Barry Seal. And you can probably add her to the list as well at number 69. So just hours before James McDougall who was in jail in solitary confinement, was supposed to testify in the Kenneth Starr grand jury. Right when Waco happened and all the reporters rushed from Fort Worth, where he was, over to Waco, James McDougal had a heart attack in prison, and instead of sending him to a normal hospital, they sent him to what's being called a welfare hospital, where interns were allowed to practice on patients. And there, he basically received really bad care because a new FOIA request came out saying they ignored his signs of imminent death. So I would add this to the Clinton body count number at 70. The Clinton killing spree will continue with Charles Meissner, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for International Economic Policy, and he was on the same plane with Ron Brown, who we covered earlier. James Dewey Milan was witness to the MENA drug operation and the Henry Ives murders, another train murder witness. Milan was decapitated and it was initially ruled an ulcer that his small dog had eaten his head off, but his head was recovered from a trash bin several blocks away, so that's impossible. Charles Wilborn Miller, vice president and board member for Altel. Altel was a computer company that wrote the White House Big Brother computer system. He was found shot to death, like multiple other people have been, with multiple guns, and multiple shots were fired, and somehow that's declared a suicide. Ron Miller was another witness. To campaign contribution fraud involving Ron Brown, and Ron Miller died from what looks like ricin poisoning, and the hospital covered up anything about it. John Millis, the last one on the slide, was killed on June 4, 2000, just after completing his investigation, and he was a member of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, and he had just looked into the CIA cocaine smuggling, 
and he used to be a CIA agent, and of course he came out and said they did nothing wrong. And then later, right after producing his report, people were claiming a man was threatening suicide in a motel room, and then the police found him dead from a gunshot wound. With these names on the list, we're now up to 75 people killed by the Clintons. Here we have Joe Montano, chairman of the DNC just before Debbie Wasserman Soltz and regional director for Tim Kaine. He died in July of 2016. He supposedly died of a heart attack at the ripe old age of 47. And looking at this guy on the screen, that doesn't look like someone who might die of a heart attack anytime soon. He looks like he's in fairly decent shape for almost being 50 years old. And he had worked with basically the DNC and he died right after the WikiLeaks email dump. Tony Moser, who was a critic of the Arkansas Democrat political machine, was killed by a car on this street you're looking at here, and the police ruled that there was no wrongdoing in the death because the driver wasn't intoxicated or speeding. But I guess that makes it okay to just run journalists over if they're, you know, critical of the Clintons or the Democrats in Arkansas. So you can add Tony Moser as number 77 to the Clinton body count. And in another single car accident, Paula Grober, the longtime speech interpreter for the deaf for the Clintons, a very attractive lady, according to the reports, died in a single car crash and was thrown 33 feet from her car. That's right, 33 feet from her car. Continuing on the Clinton killing spree, Neil Moody was killed in 96 after the death of Vincent Foster. His wife, Lisa Foster, married James Moody, the father of Neil Moody. And Neil Moody was supposedly had discovered something in Lisa Foster's documents that was damning and was arguing with someone in his car before his car was seen speeding out of control and hitting a brick wall. Paul Olson, a federal witness, died when his plane was bombed in 1994. Jerry Luther Parks, head of the Clinton gubernatorial team, was killed in Little Rock in his car when he was shot multiple times with a 9mm pistol. And he was supposedly collecting a dossier on Clinton illicit activities just before he was killed and supposedly told his family members after the Vincent Foster death that he was next on the list. Victor Razor and his son Montgomery Razor died in the same plane crash and both of them are highly connected to the Clintons and the Clintons even named the widow of Victor Razor to be one of their nominees for another position after this happened so they still remain close to the widow of two people they may have had killed. And the last one is Jeff Rhodes, another witness in the train deaths and MENA drug operations. And he was first tortured, had his hands and feet cut off, then burned and shot in the head. Seth Conrad Rich, in charge of the DNC Voter Expansion Data Center, was likely the leak for WikiLeaks on the DNC leaks that just happened. And he was killed outside his apartment when he got shot in the back multiple times and it's just total nonsense he was absolutely killed to cover this up and now there's a twenty five thousand dollar reward so i would like to know since it was hillary clinton and i'm telling you that can i get my twenty five thousand dollar reward now because i'm pretty sure i know who ordered the killing of this individual it was hillary clinton so send me my check this is called a blackhawk helicopter. And normally it's a very stable aircraft, unless you've been anywhere near Bill Clinton recently. In that case, this is what it looks like. And more, four more people you can add to the list are Major General William Robertson, Colonel William Denberger, Colonel Robert Kelly, Specialist Gary Rhodes, and in a separate plane crash, Dr. Ronald Rogers. And all of these people died in plane crashes, and the four first guys were people that escorted Bill Clinton on his Roosevelt carrier mission visit 
where a whole bunch of other people died within four months of each other all in crashes. Dr. Rogers was on his way to give an interview when his plane crashed. Charles Ruff, the Clinton lawyer during the impeachment trials, died in a very strange manner and all the medical reports are all altered after his death and he likely just knew too much and now the Clinton body count has gotten all the way to 91. 91 people that they've killed off to keep quiet. Gary Webb, author of the book Dark Alliance, which became the movie Killed the Messenger, well, Bill and Hillary killed the messenger. This guy was found dead by suicide after shooting himself in the head twice, after releasing all types of information on the MENA drug operation, which, as you can see from this documentary, a lot of people have been killed over. So Gary Webb is absolutely on their list at 92. X8 will get Hillary up to 100 people they've had killed off, starting with Colonel James Sabo, who was about to whistleblow on drug running stuff going on, and Bill Shelton is the next individual. Bill was the fiancé of Kathy Ferguson, and he bit the bullet when he committed suicide at her gravesite, and Kathy Ferguson we covered earlier in this video. John Parnell Walker, who supposedly had been investigating the Madison Guarantee and was working with Vincent Foster, supposedly fell out of a hotel balcony window and died. Calvin Walraven, another drug witness, was found shot to death with a gun blast to the face, and somehow the police said no foul play was involved there. Maynard Webb was another MENA drug running operation witness who worked at the airport and had stumbled across aircraft whose tails numbers were being changed and he accidentally walked into a spinning propeller head first. Russell Welch was infected with military grade anthrax and Alan G. Wicker was the person who oversaw Clinton's Secret Service detail and he died in the Oklahoma City bombing that has been highly documented as a false flag by many other alternative researchers. Ed Willey decided to eat a shungot blast to the face in the woods of Virginia, committing suicide on the very same day that Bill Clinton had sexually assaulted his wife. So with all eight of these individuals onto the body count list, we've now reached 100 dead people because of the Clintons. Paul Tully, Democrat National Committee political director, was found dead in his hotel room in Little Rock, Arkansas of unknown causes in September 24th, 1992, and he was a good and dear friend of the Clintons. Paul Wilcher, investigating drug running in Mena and Waco, died of unknown causes three weeks after delivering an affidavit to Janet Reno with his findings. So you can absolutely add this guy to the Clinton body count list. This individual, Gareth Williams, was an MI6 agent who had hacked Hillary and Bill Clinton and entered their circle of friends while working both sides of the Atlantic. And his suicide was conducted by locking himself inside of a duffel bag with the key with him and eventually that was so preposterous that the authorities had to finally admit that he was actually murdered but they never arrested any of the suspects and this is definitely another person you can add to the clinton body count at 103 and you can see obviously this picture at the end is the duffel bag that he supposedly locked himself into to commit suicide as if anyone would ever commit suicide that way John Augustus Wilson, former D.C. council member, had information on the Whitewater scandal until he supposedly hung himself in the process of releasing that information. And you can add him to the Clinton body count at 104. Continuing on, Jim Wilhite, vice chairman, Arkla Incorporated, died in a one-person skiing accident. He had extensive ties with the Clintons. Theodore Williams Jr., Betty Curry's brother. A passing car hit the brother of Presidential Secretary Betty Curry after his own car had somehow run off the road. Barbara Wise was a Commerce Department staffer who was involved with the Clinton scandal 
revolving around John Huang, and she was found dead in her locked office, beaten to death. Richard Winters was a suspect in the train death of Ives and Henry, and he was killed with a shotgun blast to the face and called suicide. Terence Yeeke, the first police officer to arrive at the Oklahoma City bombing, had covered a ton of data on the Murrah bombing building, and he died when he committed suicide by cutting himself 11 times and then shooting himself in the head, and then somehow, after he was dead, the gun vanished. And yes, Hillary, you absolute psychopath, I'm at 109, and I'm still counting. And just a cautionary tale for all the Secret Service agents that will be protecting the Clintons in the future, you might want to take a look at their past because a lot of the people that have protected them have ended up dead because they probably saw too much or saw what they were up to. And in one case, four Clinton bodyguards in 1993 were sent into Waco where all four were shot execution style to the left side of the temple. And the FBI also later admitted that none of the Branch Davidians shot any people. So these four people were killed by someone other than the Branch Davidians at Waco, which would suggest uh, the U.S. government, therefore highly likely that Hillary had them killed to keep them quiet about something else. And this puts the count at 113 dead people because of Hillary. And lastly, any video about Hillary Clinton must include Ambassador Chris Stevens, Glenn Doherty, Sean Smith, and Tyrone Woods, the four Americans that were killed in Benghazi. And she doesn't get all the blame for Benghazi, so we'll only give her one for this, bring her count up to 114. But you cannot discuss Hillary Clinton without talking about her role and the people that she allowed to get killed in Benghazi. And if you can vote for this lady for president after all of these people have been killed, you need to have your head checked. This lady should be in jail in the deepest, darkest hole that you can put a serial killer in because she's killed at least 114 people, and that doesn't include all the people she's killed with her policies. I mean, seriously, Charles Manson only ordered other people to kill for him, and he's known as one of the most vicious serial killers of all time. And the Clintons have done the same exact thing, except far more proficiently killing 114 people, as we've documented, making them far worse than the Manson family. These people need to be locked up before they kill anyone else. I mean, seriously, 114 people highly implicated to have been killed by them. There's all types of connections. You could get any one of those names and find all types of evidence leading right to the Clintons. Put these people in jail immediately. People ask me when I was making this, aren't you scared exposing all this with all the people they've killed off? No. I was bold in the pursuit of knowledge, never fearing to follow truth and reason to whatever results they led, and bearding every authority which stood in their way. That's how I conduct my research. I don't care what authority I'm going after. If you've killed 114 people, I'm going to expose you. And Hillary Clinton, you are a serial killer, along with Bill. Absolutely insane. And as I constantly try to explain to people, voting is only giving you the illusion of control. If you can't vote to get rid of government, you don't actually have a real choice. You get the pick between two puppets that they constantly put out in front of you. And don't come at me with, oh, vote for the other candidate, whoever that is, other than Hillary. We need far more than that. We need a grassroots organized change to bring forth the constitutional convention I've called for. Go ahead and read my articles on this on Steemit. The links will be in the description. But we need far more than just to vote for someone else. We need to completely change the system so that people like Bill and Hillary can't go around killing 114 people and then being possibly the next president of a country that has nuclear weapons. As far as I'm concerned, these two Illuminati puppets can take their stupid Masonic sign of silence and shove it directly up their asses. You've killed 114 people. People need to speak out. They should absolutely not be allowed anywhere near the White House or in charge of the military. We have to get these people thrown into jail for all the people they've killed. Those people deserve justice. 
these two killers deserve to be in jail for the crimes they've committed. And thanks to me, you two ain't getting away with this anymore. I'm not sure I'm going to get away with it this time. This is Titus Frost, spitting truth, causing glitches in the Matrix. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like, subscribe, and share. 